Hello, I'm Janelle Schala, and in this video I'm going to be discussing Tiger's Eye. The first piece I'm going to show you is really interesting in that it's partially polished and partially it's been left rough. You'll notice the layering, it's got this wonderful play of light and a real fibrous quality to it, which gives you some idea of how it forms. Now how it forms, which is open to argument, but most mineralogy books will agree that it forms by starting off life as blue asbestos through a process of metamorphic change under a huge amount of heat and press pressure the asbestos gets replaced with quartz and you will find it listed as a quartz it is considered to be a massively formed quartz and part of the quartz species if the quartz is clear the asbestos retains its color or it retains the color of the asbestos and you get blue tiger's eye that really deep midnight blue. And that's also known as hawk's eye or falcon's eye. If it contains, if the quartz contains um, iron oxide, you'll get the golden color that we most frequently associate with tiger's eye. And tiger's eye is a really popular mineral for polishing and carving and using in jewelry. So this is one example. It's a tiger's eye wand, as you can see. And the the carving and the polishing really brings out the play of light. That's what Tiger's Eye is known for. Now, interestingly, I've seen a lot of crystal healing books talk about Tiger's Eye as being a talisman, a protective amulet used during the Middle Ages, but I haven't been able to find any reference to it in medieval lapidaries, so I don't know what to think of it. I think it's more likely that it was discovered in the 18th or 19th century because of where it's mostly mined, which is around South Africa and Australia. It does come from other places, but those are the primary sources. Because it's a popular mineral to polish and carve, you get these lovely carvings like this dragon, and the changes of the texture, the changes of the plane of the carving, really gives you a play of light. It looks gorgeous when they carve it like this. Tiger's eye, the gold tiger's eye is usually associated with the uh, solar plexus chakra. Also, it's a very earthing mineral, so anything, any of the earthly chakras, it will help to keep you grounded. But these days, it's usually used as a good luck stone, like a universal good luck stone. It's also good for stimulating the solar plexus and giving more energy and clearing. And uh, it's also very good for stimulating creativity. So if you're trying to get yourself into writing that book or painting that picture, it's a good one to start with, to give you the ideas, to give you that stimulation to go for it. A very unusually, you sometimes get tiger's eye where some of it has the iron oxide and some of it doesn't and you end up with this mixture of blue and gold. Stunningly beautiful. Just have a look at that sphere. And so, of course, you'll get the qualities of the two. I didn't mention, but the blue tiger's eye is usually, usually considered to be very highly protective, so people wear it to protect themselves. Gold tiger's eye is used for protection as well, so you can have all the other qualities plus the protection. Really lovely stone. The only other thing I'll say is that not everybody gets on with it. It really divides opinion. So some people will be madly in love with it, and they have to wear it and have it around them, and they have to have it with them all the time. Other people can't wear it. It's too stimulating or somehow makes them feel uncomfortable. So you'll have to experiment with it to see how you fit in there.